Hello everybody, welcome back to the Moshix channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to be looking at JES2. Uh, JES2 is a very important component of MVS, or for that matter, uh, OS390 or ZOS, um, because it is the subsystem that enables MVS to uh, execute workload. Um, when you boot up, when you IPL MVS, um, that it's just the nucleus running and you have the various uh, disk access methods such as vSAM and QSAM, etc. Um, and there's obviously a scheduler within MVS, within the nucleus of MVS, which decides which address space gets executed next based on what the address bases uh, need and based on the availability and resources. However, um, the uh, system uh, at that stage is not yet able to run um, jobs to run workload because it, it lacks a, a means to introduce work to uh, MVS and and uh, another way it lacks a means to introduce uh, to entry uh, um, jobs into the system. A job as we know is an address space that's made out of that's described by JCL. Uh, JCL will describe um, which program needs to be executed and which resources it needs and which constraints are going to be put on this particular job. Um, and uh, once you have the definition of all these three things and you start the job, it becomes an address space and it's now being executed by the MBS uh, uh, nucleus. Um, however, uh, the job of uh, scanning the JCL, making sure there's no errors, making sure that the uh, resources are available, such as data sets, tapes, etc., um, as well as uh, scheduling those jobs and giving them priority system that the programmer or the operators can decide on, um, that's what the job entry subsystem does. The other thing that the job entry subsystem does, obviously, is a handle spool, which means handling data that goes into the job as well as handling the data that comes out of a job. Um, in MBS 3.a, we run JS2. There's also JS3 available. I have a separate video about this, uh, which I will link to um, in the description below this video. Um, JS2 and JS3 are related cousins. JS2 um, is uh, was for many years the uh, job entry subsystem for medium, small, medium, and and the and the smaller, large uh, installations. Uh, it could be clustered in what's called a multi-access pool. And JS3 uh, was a clustering uh, job entry subsystem, and still around, obviously, for very large installations where you could cluster up to 16 mainframes and have um, an active passive or have an active active uh, configuration for high availability. Um, in MVS uh, 3.8, in TK4, we only have JS2. JS3 was made available for the first time last year. I made this video about it. Um, and I think in the future, TK4 will also have the choice of uh, JS3. But today, we're only going to be looking at JS2. So um, first things first, what does JS2 mean? Job entry subsystem, uh, number two. And its predecessor was something called HASP. Um, I'll write it here. Which stood for Houston Automatic Spool Program. Um, and why is it called Houston Automatic Spool? Why was it called Houston Automatic Spool Program? Well, that's because a couple of IBM contractors in Houston working at NASA during the Apollo 11 program in the 60s uh, were tired of having jobs being uh, the speed of jobs being controlled by the speed of the printers. Uh, because if you think about it, if you're printing something on the printer, the printer is going to be millions of times slower than the CPU. And so the, the, the program printing something on the printer would have to wait until each line is printed to be able to send more stuff to the printer. Um, and so they had the genius idea of writing a system that would allow the program to think it's printing to the printer, but it's really printing to disk, which is, of course, thousands of times faster than a printer. And then once it's printed on disk, uh, spooled on disk as it's called, it, it can then go to the printer at the uh, at the speed of the printer and the program has already been uh, terminated a long time ago. Um, so that became HASP, uh, was a free program distributed at uh, IBM share events. Um, and later on IBM took it on and enhanced it and um, and took ownership of it 
and started selling it and it became uh, Jest2. Um, to this day, HASP or Jest2 error messages are called HASP. And we'll see this in a second. Uh, and in fact, it's the only four letter uh, system message in, in the IBM mainframe world. All other only system messages are, are four, uh, three letters, whereas HASP are retained to four letters. So um, you can control, obviously soon after um, MVS starts, you will have the Jest2 address space, which looks just like a normal address space, but is defined as a, as a subsystem. Subsystems have a special character to pass messages to them. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be the dollar sign here. Um, and so anytime I type a command like this, the uh, display active address spaces, that this would be a reply now coming in from the MBS nucleus. Um, if I want to talk to Jest2, I put in a dollar sign in front. And then let's say I say display active jobs and it will say no active jobs being run right now because there's nothing running on the system. Um, if I wanted to see which devices are controlled by Jest2 on the system, uh, you'll see that uh, all these devices are assigned to Jest2. Um, and this is important uh, to understand that the printers are not really controlled by MBS anymore once Jest2 starts up those devices will be controlled exclusively by Jest2 and MBS can't really print to those devices on its own um, or use those devices on its own. They're controlled by Jest2. Uh, so the reader, which is device 00C uh, by standard, um, printer one, which is class, well, I know is class A and, and that's device 00E. And we can go check what kind of devices they are, they are here. So 00C is a 3505 reader, a card reader. And the 00E is a 1403 um, uh, uh, impact printer. Um, it's a 1200 lines per minute printer. Um, and in fact, uh, even though it was widely used in the 360 and 370 um, mainframes, this print actually came with the 1401 IBM mainframe, um, a predecessor of the 360 machine. A very, light, a very interesting machine because it had decimal arithmetic. Um, other, you know, unless unless all the other systems later on, which were binary arithmetic, this one, the 1401 had direct decimal arithmetic. Um, it was a business machine, therefore very slow at floating point. There's some very interesting videos uh, that just recently came up on YouTube about the restoration of the IBM 1401 at the IBM uh, uh, Computer Museum in, um, in Mountain View. Um, I just looked at a video about that yesterday. Anyway, back to uh, Jest2. So these are the devices it controls. It has three printers with different classes attached to them. It has a puncher, 00D. And then it has something called lines. And lines are um, active. Uh, they're actually phone lines, usually, either leased or, or uh, switched lines, um, that would allow a remote station to submit jobs to Jest2 and get the output back. Um, so in the old days, you would have let's say a university, a larger campus, where you would have each uh, building could have its own remote job entry subsystem. So if you follow here in this window, RGE remote job entry uh, station, uh, which was like a, a desk sized machine. You could put uh, punch cards into it. And when you pressed uh, read, it would read those punch, punch cards in and over this line, send them over to this Jest2. Jest2 will receive it, execute the job, and then the output will be automatically sent back to that machine where there was a printer to print out the output. Um, I myself never worked with uh, a real, um, I think they were called 3280, if I'm not mistaken, um, or something like that, um, uh, stations. Um, but the protocol still lives today, and uh, there are several uh, remote job entry system um, emulators out there that will allow you to send um, workload over a line um, over to a Jest2 system. Um, and of course, uh, Jest3 has a similar provision. Um, so those are lines for remote job entry um, that Jest2 controls. Um, and obviously, the, one of the main things that programs interact with when they work with Jest2 is the spool. Um, so, um, the way we usually look at the spool is either um, we go to 3.8 here um, and then we can see there is a oops um, what happened here no output available well let's create an output um, 
right, let's go here, JCL lib. And then let's go here, take this job and run it. Obviously, um, in the output viewer, it will only show output that belongs to us. That's why it's important to call the job something called like like as my own user, herc01 in this case. And then I know that uh, if I put an H, that's going to be held output, which means it will be held in the spool, in the just 2 spool. So let's run this program. I'm, I'm, I'm aware that I'm not really telling you anything new here, just from being uh, coherent in what I'm telling you. So let's go to the output viewer and here we have our output. What? What's wrong with this invalid keyword? Hmm. This is very strange. Um, no output available. Something is very weird um, with my system. Uh, and I also didn't see the job run here. So I have some doubts. Well, let's switch again. Submit. And we should have seen this job here <laughs> uh, being executed. But we didn't. Um, So either I'm correct connected to the wrong system. Um, let's go here to this um, output viewer. Uh, four, number four, uh, spool browser. Major disasters occurred in, in their processing. Okay, so there is something wrong with the system. We probably have to shut it down. So. Um, always interesting um, um, so okay let's do uh, log off um, just is probably a little confused here um, by the way we can see how full the spool is by doing uh, uh, dollar D print and it says 6% spool utilization but something is very wrong with our spool um, okay good so that shows us what that sometimes this is the first time I had this problem in, in probably two or three years but um, I've also done bad things to this uh, particular MBS instance that's running it's been up for let's check yeah for three weeks um, and I've done bad things to it so let's uh, shut it down um, with force Okay, this is an MVS command. BSP pilot, shot fast. Let's shut down and then shot fast. Okay. All right, so this is going down. And I left this running while I went on a trip um, to Europe and um, to other places and, and um, I tried to connect to it several times from even from the airplane and they did some bad things to it. So I think uh, the system is just a little confused. I removed almost all RAM from it. This is running inside a virtual machine. I can show you here. Um, this is a virtual machine with three CPUs and with eight gigabyte of RAM. Uh, and this has been up for a while. Oh, that's weird. It says nine days, but that's not possible because Hercules was running for three weeks. So something is very wrong with the system. I should probably just reboot it. Um, okay. Let's help it a little bit. Let's shut it down since I'm doing its work anyway. And also the command one address space is gone. Okay, there's only uh, VTEM now running NGS2. 
we have to wait for VTAM to shut down. VTAM is net um, here um, before I can shut down Jest 2. And um, this is also interesting because you will see that sometimes Jest 2 just refuses to come down in TK4. Uh, the reason is that um, some of the lines, um, I think it's the lines that are not properly drained. Okay, so uh, net ended, that's VTAM. See here, VTAM is now uh, inactive. IST messages are all VTAM. Um, IE, IEF, those are nucleus messages by the MVS nucleus. And then you see here the big difference in HASP has four letter uh, messages. Um, that's just two telling us a VTAM uh, stop because you actually need just two to start VTAM. Um, VTAM, although it's it's kind of a subsystem, it needs just two to, uh, to, to start. Um, so let's see what's running in the system. It's only just two. Let's shut it down. Uh, term. Okay. Uh, just two not dormant system now draining. You will find this very, very often in TK4. Just two not coming down properly. And um, um, okay, there's no operator request. I don't know why Just two refuses to come down. In these situations, you can actually, um, because if you go to MVS and say um, uh, cancel Just two, uh, it will say. Uh, IEE, the uh, MBS knows that just 2 is a very special address space and it says it cannot be cancelled. Uh, you can also not stop it, stop just 2 by doing this. Um, you would just not react to it. Uh, the only way to shut it down, if it doesn't come down on its own, is by doing uh, P for uh, stop, just 2 event. And this will sh just cancel it. As you can see here, it will start, uh, it will say just to catastrophic error. It's not something you should ever see in a production system. And it tells us all the things that are wrong with it. This is just release 4.1. Uh, this is the module that started it all. This is the PTF that was applied to it. Um, it shows us here um, why it has a catastrophic error. Operator issued PGS2 event. Um, and then you have the register output. Now it wants to he wants to hear something to continue and a lot of people i don't know what to do here at this point anymore than just write quit here which is which makes things even worse what you should do here is um answer reply one uh purge which means purge uh the address space okay um so by doing that now just termination is complete just start stopped uh, uh on its own this is Jess uh, talking to us, and then you have the MBS nucleus telling us that the Jess address space is finished. So at this point, we do um, we close the SMF, the System Management Facility data sets, by doing Z end of day, and then uh, we'll do a bias, which uh, flushes all the cache onto the disks, and then we're done. Okay. At this point, um, I may actually do a quick. Um, update of my kernel in case something's wrong with my kernel here my Linux kernel inside the virtual machine please bear with me oh there's 36 packages to be updated yeah I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna reboot uh, this is my by the way while this comes up this is my cluster my ESXi cluster I have my giant um, server here uh, with 40 CPUs and 80, 80 logical processors and lots of uh, address spaces running, um, uh, virtual machines running and then I have my Intel NUCs here, one, two, three, four, five of them. So I have in total maybe 100, 150 virtual machines uh, and this is running on this NUC which is um, two CPUs at 3.5 gigahertz, so it's very fast with I think 32 gigabytes of RAM which gives a four logical processor, although this particular um, virtual machine has three CPUs and eight gigabyte of RAM, okay? So uh, let's go back here and uh, log in. Okay, we have enough address, uh, we have enough memory, um, space on the disk, everything seems fine. Let's start a screen session, okay, and 
Where's my MVS here? Okay, here it is. And I started with just uh, dot slash MVS. And I reconnect here. Oh, this was not the same system. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> I don't know where I'm connected here. Uh, so I was right. Uh, this wasn't the same system. What is this? Oh, this is 141. Okay. Um, let's connect to 141. Why is this not working now? Hmm. Oh, 3270. Okay. So this should be up any second now. Sorry, folks, about all this commotion. Okay. But we had the problem with Jesto anyway. So there's another system somewhere running um, address space, uh, running IP52 that has, a, that has a TK4 running that has a problem with Jesto. Um, but I'll fix it later. Um, okay, so let's log in. Um, and let's go look, play again with the spool. Um, and we had here something. Uh, and obviously, since this is a different machine we have to redo everything here sorry about this and we put H and now when I execute this obviously we'll see this job here running uh, okay job 722 uh, by the way did you notice that uh, just two came back up again even though we ended it somewhat ungracefully um, so this um, I found that this way um, doesn't really corrupt um, the Jazz 2 uh, system and it, um, it, it, it always recovers gracefully. So that's one way to end Jazz 2 if it doesn't want to go down. And here are 303, pli 303 primes up to 2000 found. So let's go look at the uh, spool. And so this is now the spool, right? This is a Jazz 2 spool. And the, okay, and we're looking at uh, the output here. Now this is on this output is exists on the Jest2 spool. The Jest2 spool is a vSAM space where uh, uh, Jest2 writes uh, output. Uh, it's not human readable. You need an in you need to interface to uh, vSAM to be able to extract the output. It's not just a, a sequential data set or anything like that. Um, and the other way we can look at the output, to go back to what we were doing before we had this whole shutdown thing, is uh, go to this one spool browser number four and um, help if you write help here we'll tell you the commands display all jobs in output class um, so uh, we can do doh uh, okay Yo. Oh. Uh, oh, held output. Yeah, uh, this is our job here. That one we looked at before. Okay, uh, I can put here uh, a D and then we'll show us all the various um, parts of the output, somewhat similar to SDSF, um, uh, the IBM SDSF utility, which I think is much more. Um, evolved in this, but it's it is, does its job. We see the output here. This is the output from the job itself. This, we have the assembler um, output, which is the assembled uh, program. We have um, the sysin, which is the program itself, and uh, we have uh, the loader output itself. So. Um, this is one way to look at the output, um, and of course um, now we, if I want to see the spool utilization, it will say seven percent because we, now we have a job in there. Okay, and if I continue running this job, eventually the spool will be full, and when the spool is full, bad things start to happen. You cannot have 
just to run out of spool. That's a very bad thing. It will, it will bring the whole system to its knees. Um, uh, eventually, every system programmer has experienced that. One of the things about um, running MVS on a, on a, in an emulated environment uh, is the following. Um, in the old days, back when I was working on a real mainframe, um, I was a programmer and, uh, and, and programmers were just um, logging into TSO, um, doing ISPF work to edit jobs, submit the jobs, look at the output in the in uh, SDSF, which was the spool viewer, or print out on uh, on uh, fold paper, and get you know maybe half an hour later get the output from the from the operators in the in the machine room. Uh, but you didn't really have to manage the, you, you didn't manage the machine. Um, now that we have uh, Hercules and, and MVS is a tiny little program for today's machines with 16, 32, 100 gigabyte of RAM and you know multiple terabytes of disk space. Uh, this instance of MVS is a tiny little program for my Windows machine that you're looking at right now. And but what the, what it means is. We, we can't be just normal programs anymore. We also have to be system programmers. We have to manage uh, JS2. Uh, we have to manage MBS. We have to manage the disk. We, we own the machine. And so uh, Hercules and, and, and all other uh, emulators out there, such as SimH, force users to become also system administrators or system programmers uh, next to being just normal users and programmers. And that's why it's important to know more about um, things that we didn't have to know before because such as JS2 and other subsystems because uh, we have to manage the machine and if we don't do it properly um, it's just not going to be running effectively and we're going to lose data and it's going to be a frustrating experience so that's why i'm making these videos by the way so back to what we're doing so um, JS2 here is running now we know that there's spool has a finite amount of space how do we see what's going on with the space um, well, let me go back in here. Let's go to 3.4 and let's look at all the JS2 data sets. Um, the JS2 data sets are contained in, uh, where is it? In this data sets here. Um, okay, so this are data sets that are important to JS2. The first one is the spool space. Um, let's put in an I here to get information about this um, about this data set. sys one dot h a space. That's a spool space. Has with again it's for Houston Automatic Spool Program or JS2. Anytime you see HASP, think JS2, and it has its own volume as you can see here. HASP 00, and it uses 7,567 tracks, and the organization is somewhat undefined. Um, because it's a special data set, but it's really a VSAM data set, such as this Dropbox. VS means uh, VSAM. Um, and so uh, let's go look at this. And so we see here it's a 3330, which 3330 is of about 550 cylinders. Um, and that's about 7,600 data uh, tracks. So what we see here, there is in this volume here, there's one data set called sys1.ha space which takes up the whole volume. And the organization of it is uh, particular. We're gonna see very soon how these data sets are defined. Um, JS2 has its own formatting of this data set. It formats it. Uh, there's a mini formatting where it just changes uh, the very first record and changes to a zero. There's a normal formatting where it formats the whole space um, um, with, its, with the format it needs to store either input data set, uh, input jobs or output um, produced by jobs into uh, HA space. And what happens is that when you execute a job, first of all, um, just to you know, receives, um, receive the job, um, it scans the JCL for syntax error. If there are no syntax error, it starts to decompose the JCLs in MVS control blocks, which it stores then on this, uh, inside this space, inside this pool space, as a series of control blocks and waits for um, submitting it to MBS. Once um, it's it's ready to submit it, it could be immediately, it could be later, it could be uh, waiting for release by the operator. Um, it will be submitted to the internal reader of MBS called AA uh, Reader. 
which is an, a reader that exists in it's a virtual reader that uh, a virtual card reader that exists within the nucleus of MBS. It submits it there, and and MBS starts building an address space, takes the control blocks from the control blocks that just to built and then gives the CPU over to that address space and the job is now running. And while it's being interrupted for IO, MVS controls the execution of the address space by priority system whenever uh, decides when the address space should uh, receive um, uh, the CPU. And while the uh, job is then executing and producing output, that output is going back in here. So what it does is actually changes all the output um, uh, when you schedule the job uh, just to changes all the output to point to uh, to itself to just to and then just to receives that output from the job and writes it inside this uh, address space and when the job terminates then um, gives you the opportunity to uh, look at the uh, output as just like we did or if it's defined for direct printing to the to the printer just to will receive that output and just to will then uh, buffer it so that the job can run at a maximum speed and uh, handle the printers in the background. So that's what Jest 2 does. I hope you were able to follow what I just said here. It is somewhat complicated, but it's really, uh, in, in principle, it's, it's simple. Um, it's what be, what's behind the scenes that makes it complicated, but the, the function is pretty simple. So uh, this is the spool space. Jest 2 can have more than one spool space, and we're going to see in a second how to allocate choose more spool space. Then it does a second data set um, on a different volume because obviously this took out the whole volume here and it's only three tracks. Uh, it's not really very big um, and it's called the checkpoint uh, data set. The checkpoint data set is where Jest2 periodically stores what is this, uh, the status of Jest2 itself so that if a job crashes or Jest2 crashes, it can restart the job from the same point where it was running. Um, so for instance, if a job was uh, waiting for uh, execution. Uh, if Jest 2 crashes because of the checkpoint data sets, Jest 2 when it comes up again, it knows that the job is still there waiting for execution. Um, and it can run it again. Also, this data set is what synchronizes Jest 2 when you have something called a mass, which is multi access spool. Okay, Jest 2 can run in several configurations. Um, it can either, you can either have, um, if this was on its own device, disk device, which unfortunately in TK4 it isn't, uh, but it could be moved, obviously. Um, you could have a, a, a DASD, a device, which only has this data set, and then you could share this device through the Hercules um, um, DASD sharing capability over TCP IP. And then you could have two just two, two MBS instances, two TK4s running on two computers or even inside the same computer, access this data set and they could uh, see each other's jobs. And that's how they would synchronize with each other. And I've actually done this in the past. Uh, I may maybe one day uh, do, uh, make a video how to produce a, um, a just two cluster with uh, uh, TK4 and MBS 3.8 that works. Later versions of MBS required a a um, uh, what's called uh, uh, a coupling facility, which is basically a, a computer that synchronizes uh, between two systems, um, and that became the pre prerequisite for uh, multi-access pool. Um, then you have uh, poly spool, which means um, a Jest 2 can have several spools. And you can also have um, the spool itself being placed on the coupling facility so that all JS2 can use the same spool program. So those are the three configurations of JS2. Um, the one that we can do um, in uh, TK4 and MBS 3.8 is the multi-access pool, uh, which means pointing to the same, um, uh, the same, same two data sets. Um, but they will have to be on shared devices. Um, so um, this is a small data set, but very, very important. And in fact, uh, when, when Jest2 crashes, when it starts up, it will want to reacquire control of this data set. And sometimes uh, it tells you that something went wrong and you want to bypass the uh, waiting for, for this data set to be cleared. And then you have to say yes um, to MBS, uh, to Jest2. And then we have here the source uh, for uh, Jest2 itself. This is just assembler macros here. Um, 
you can see this is all assembled. This is the, the, the source code for Jazz 2. Um, and then the last one, which is very important, is this data set, um, which has the Jazz 2 parameter, uh, parameters uh, that Jazz 2 reads upon startup. So here you have Jurgen, the maintainer of TK4, put in what is in here. Uh, Jazz 2 parameter with printers, punches, and readers drained. So uh, 00E is server class A, printer 2 is on um, device F is Z for standard for started tasks and for TSO output and um, and the printer 3 is for held output uh, job output X and then there's a puncher on class B so you can punch directly to cards by uh, saying uh, message class B and there's a reader which also is controlled by Jazz 2 um, and then you have um, things that uh, start to make sense now you see this is the control character uh, is the dollar sign which is pretty much standard all across the world so that we can uh, get output uh, we can talk to Jazz 2 so by putting the dollar uh, at the end of, at the beginning of a message um, MBS knows to pass it over over to Jazz 2 and it's defined here uh, the checkpoint data sets um, volume is defined here we just saw it before uh, it checkpoints every 60 seconds you can also say 30 something like this uh, if you do a multi-access pool, you probably want to sync every four, four or five or six seconds. Um, and um, and then we have all kind of uh, uh, default settings that we set for the installation. Um, default estimated execution time is a minute. Uh, default estimated print output is um, uh, 50,000 lines. Um, subsystem supply module name this is how we link just to the the the, mod, the object to the MBS um, subsystem interface um, internal reader authorization this is the internal reader I was talking to you about um, and max job class is 3 max job in job queue is 128 is probably a little bit much maximum VTAM sessions magical log logical initiators um, there's all kind of settings that I wouldn't necessarily go and change unless you know what you're doing. Uh, remember that this is uh, as for version 4.1, so we can go find the manuals on BitSavers um, for this version, and then everything that's in there will apply to the version we have in TK4. And that's the only version that runs on 3.8, because I have later versions of uh, Hasp or just to require um, require uh, something called um, dual address space capability, which we don't have in 3.8. Um, and other settings. And here is the printer definitions. So class A with a separator page, um, no pause, unit drain when, when done, and FCB is the, 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 the uh, form uh, control block is six, which is a standard form, and we have three printers defined here. Um, uh, so, um, all kind of settings that you don't really want to uh, mock with too much. Um, this is um, the prioritization of jobs. Don't change anything here because you just make it worse. Um, here you have, you know, if the account and programmer is required um, you can see here this settings here so batch requires uh, account and programmer you can define what is required in the in the job card this defines what's required in the job card um, this is the definition of the uh, reader uh, the card reader here 00c um, all kind of settings um, uh, it's it looks complicated. It's not really that complicated. Um, it's once you read the manual, this all makes a lot of sense. Um, so that's it. This is what controls um, what controls Jest two. Now let's go see how to define a, um, a spool space. Let's say that we're not happy with the thirty three thirty because this is what we have here. Remember, this um, is a thirty three thirty, and I think thirty three thirties have about. Um, if I'm not mistaken, about 70 megabytes of spool space, uh, of space, um, and so since this takes the whole device, I have about 70 megabytes. Um, 
let's say you want to create a spool space on another device uh, so then uh, let's see what kind of devices we have um, there was a program here to show list uh, I, I was list vol I think um, Yeah, so um, let's go find out what kind of devices we have here where we could write a new, this is the current spool. And when you create a spool, a new spool uh, volume, you don't necessarily have to use it. So we can first just create one just to see how to do that. So it's gonna be one of the pubs here. Um, let's see what um, devices those pubs are. Here, so apples. Uh, pub 002 uh, information um, I think we can go see here uh, we will have to go find out what those are uh, let's just uh, okay this is a 3380 uh, I don't know how full it is. That's where the DS list on uh, on ISPF is much better because it tells you how full the data set the volume is. Um, let's try three, and that's a 3390. Um, so we can try to allocate the data set here. I already created a JCL for that, but unfortunately it's on the wrong it's on the wrong um, computer. Let's go get it from there. session and okay so this apparently is something I was working on for a YouTube video but um, Okay, the, this happens sometimes. The terminal session crashed and Herc01 is still logged in. What do we do in this case? So that's always good that, to do these videos in real time and not have them scripted uh, because we can all learn from some kind of from errors that happen. Uh, and so I go through this, uh, through this thing so that you don't have to. Um, so we just cancel, you, cancel user equals Herc01. Uh, Okay, um, and it will say now zero time sharing users. Hmm. Okay, uh, her zero one. Well, her zero one reconnect. So uh, you can also use the reconnect, and it will try to reconnect you to the same session. Uh, that didn't work this time. Let's try again. Okay. Now it worked. So we're back in. Sorry about this, but always something you know, useful to learn additional stuff. Um, okay, and uh, Red Reddit did edit data recovery perform. So it realized that a session went missing and it recovered from where we were. Now let's see. Yes, it did a good job. It recovered everything. I have it in my uh, cut and paste uh, buffer on Windows anyway, but uh, good to know that it managed to recover. So. This is um, the JCL to create a new spool. Herc01, um, spool format, message level one, class A, message class H, um, format. And this is the utility we use, data generation. Um, this is the IBM standard data generation uh, utility. We call this spool, we call this um, 
let's call it sys2 ha space um, pub003 and this is a 3390 device that's what we just said and let's make it um, uh, for now just to play with uh, 20 cylinders and this is the block size it needs to have this is the record format which is um, um, which means uh, unblocked and uh, and this is the organization it needs to have and so this 3390s have 2200 cylinders so we only do 20 here just in case we want to do a whole um, volume allocation and this is the sys into this utility here we say output is pool which is defined here name fill with ffs length equals to the block size create name spool quantity and here we can uh, i don't know if we can let's do it like this let's try to run this and see what happens um uh, rev edit by the way which is one thing that i like about rev edit better than ispf controls you know reads this and make sure that this exists and then if it confirms that the volume exists and the data definition is correct it will tell you what kind of device it is which is really useful um greg price did a great job with red edit amazing piece of software so let's run it and see what happens um okay job failed not run jcl error uh to be expected i haven't done this before um Let's see if it created anything here. No, uh, sys2, nothing. Good, so three got eight. Here it is. Uh, JCL, incorrect use of ampersand in the notify field. Oh yeah, okay, so let's go back. SD37, it abandoned. Uh, let's go find out what's wrong. A band system. Uh, we didn't put in a sys band. So we can get the abend. Uh, what's wrong with that? Uh, Let's see here, first of all, what's, what's wrong? Duplicate name on direct, okay, so it did actually create it, it just, um, yeah, I, I suspected this was gonna happen. Um, so something went wrong during the creation of the spool data set, and D37 is the band code, which I think is something to do, 37 usually is when it's running out of space or something like that. Um, and that's why the second time we ran it, it says, oh, but this, uh, this volume already exists. So the proper way to do it is to have uh, two steps in here uh, and to say delete exec program IE um, branch 14 and then uh, say um, DE DSN is to has space mole equals ser equals pub zero three disposition um, uh, we'll put in disposition um, delete so this will delete the data set before it tries to um, allocate it and uh, again here it tried it recognized it um, so this is just a, a empty um, program it's just a program that enters and immediately branches to register 14 which means exits again but we use this as a dummy so that we can have the deletion of, uh, of, um, of a data set so if you do it this way you will first delete it and then you will try to create it but before we go there uh, let's go here and yeah and we see that he created um, this data set yeah um, it allocated 300 cylinders which should be the 20 
uh, 300 tracks, which should be the 20 cylinders. What went wrong, we'll have to go find out. So, um, uh, let's go find out what went wrong. Which one was the job that failed? 724. So this one is the one that failed. Um, okay, spool 290. Um, what is this 290? Hmm. Let's make this. Okay. Let's delete this. Delete information, press enter to delete the data set. And then, uh, now since this data set doesn't exist, it will now um, complain about this not being around. So let's just delete this step altogether and let's run it again. Uh, we have the MF1 report. Uh, I don't like that. Let's stop that report writer. It just, well, it just fills up the, the console. Um, all right, let's run this again and see what happens. Job 726. Okay. Uh, this went through this time without any errors. So D37 was running out of error, uh, out of space. Um, B37, D37s are usually out of space um, band codes, but you would have to go and inspect each time uh, what was wrong. Uh, and here's the output, data generated output for control cards. Uh, data generation has been successfully completed um, with the, the completion code zero. Now, if I uh, go back here, you'll see that this data set exists. Um, and um, it's around and it's perfectly uh, fine. Now, this is a secondary hatch, a, um, a spool space that we can add. So we could add this as an additional spool space, um, or we could um, just um, switch to this one and remove the first one. But that's um, uh, something that we would have to do in the just 2 parm file. So uh, if we wanted to change um, the data set, we would have to go find uh, now the the place where the spool space is is defined and obviously since jazz 2 when it starts it doesn't have any jazz 2 <laughs> so jazz 2 runs directly as an mvs task and as such there needs to be a jcl that tells it where the spool space is so to do that we have to go to proclib um, i don't know if you're following uh, any other software any other program that starts after jazz 2 runs can have the definition in the JCL for that and, and JS2 will read it, will read it and process it. But since when JS2 runs as starts up, it's there is no other job entry subsystem. And so there must be a JCL, which is in the proc lib um, to assign which um, spool space it's going to be using. So let's do that. Um, let's do that and go to sys1.proclib. And there's going to be a JS2 procedure here to start up just to uh, immediately when you see here something like this you should be suspicious that this could be uh, the procedure um, no this is the procedure to assemble uh, just to itself but it's not the procedure to start it um, okay here it is I put in the browser so that we don't delete anything or change anything by mistake. Um, so this is the procedure that starts JS2 um, and it will, it will define certain things. Uh, JS2 parm is the parameter file and this is the program has JS2. This is the program that starts it all. And you will see that somewhere down here um, we will have definition of where um, the various proc libs are so um, it says here there's a sys1 sys2 proc lib those are permissible proc libs to start to introduce jobs to jazz2 and 
let's go find out where the has space, where the small space is defined. Um, Okay. Um, this is the linker. Um, okay. So yeah, let's go read. Let's just see for a moment what's in there. It's nothing related to Jess. No, and it shouldn't because only this one per clip is going to be right here during IPL. Um, okay, here is where we define where the spool volume is. What happens is when Jess 2 starts, it reads here the volumes um, and you can have more than one volume here and then in each volume it goes and tries to find a data set with uh, the formatting of just two and um, and so here it says it's hasp 00 if we change here and put in a different volume um, and put in and have a, 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 a just two space defined just like we did with the jcl before in that volume it will find it there and it will execute it um, this is the link. So we could um, we could change it here, and next time we IPL, it will go find uh, the spool program in the next volume. I'm not going to do it here because I have uh, I don't you know you need to be obviously very very careful here. And one good thing to do here, by the way, is to create an, uh, a copy of that so that because when you start JS2 and it doesn't come up because there's an error in JS2 Parm, you could have the previous known good JS2 Parm file. Um, uh, stored somewhere else and when you start just to and it says okay I cannot start because just to parm is wrong you can say you can go in here to MBS and say uh, start just to and then parm file uh, parm I think and then you give it um, where to find the the parm um, the parameter file uh, data set to go to read that and this way you'll be able to start uh, uh, just to and bring the machine up so you can log in and go fix the error. That will be one way to do it. Okay, so uh, we have been going on here for a while. Um, there's so much more to say about just to. I think, you know, uh, for the reason I mentioned before is that we all have become system programmers with, with Hercules. It is very important that each one of us um, uh, will spend some time reading just the just to. Um, uh, uh, document uh, which is stored on beat saver so beat savers just to let's see what it comes out with okay first of all you have yeah you have the just two commands uh, which is something very advisable okay there is a very uh, extensive uh, command language here dollar t is the ones to dynamically modify parameters that were set in just two parm um, i mean there's so you can reassign output classes uh, for instance you can try it here i could say uh, dot t printer one q equals uh, let's say Okay. Okay. So by doing that, uh, now we have dynamically modified um, the uh, printer class. So now the Q is K. So I would have to print to K now to go to the printer uh, on unit 00E, the 1403 printer. And we can check that. Um, we can do, we can run a program. Uh, anything here and let's call it K okay and let's go monitor that printer and we have free aid and it's 
Fail F printer 00E. This is the printer on device 00E. And if I print something now on message class A, K, we should see some things fly by here. Oh, we probably have to restart the printer. Oops. Start printer one. Ah, dollar start. You can also put in a space here. If that makes it easier for you to read. Okay. Um, where was it? Here. You should uh, see output flying by here. Why is that not working? Um, where is it? So that's a good exercise. Um, 728. Oh, it went to the spool. Why did it go to the spool? I don't know. It should have gone to that printer. Message class K. Uh, this is PL1. That's very interesting. Why did it not go there? Okay, let's T one Q equals M. I don't know. Maybe something with K special. Um, so let's see if anything comes out here. No, nope, I'm doing something wrong. Um, this is printer one, that's for sure. Um, is it still going there? No, now all classes are going to to this pool. Yeah. Um, I have to say, I'm not quite sure what's happening here. I'll have to find out. Um, but this is uh, one way to change. I mean, it, it, it should work. Um, it's something I'm missing here. I've, I've had this uh, in the past. I've done this successfully in the past. Because uh, um, by what I did in the past is usually I did T, which is dynamically change, modify printer one, Q equals K, unit, already allocated. Uh, let's try again to run some output. Yeah, uh, it still didn't print because when it prints out, it tells you it's printing out. So I don't know what's going on here. Um, <coughs> this could be also related to the slightly older version I'm used to, a little bit newer version of Jazz 2. Um, but read this manual. Um, you can also cancel print and output. There's so many commands. Um, uh, yeah, you can, for instance, also do Z. To, um, okay, printer not active on TK4. Um, okay, still no output here. Um, I don't know what's going on, but uh, anyway, uh, I think we've gone long enough here in this video um, to understand that, you know, this is a really important manual. Uh, it's called Operators Library, uh, because usually operators in the old days, the operators were controlling Jazz 2, because they were sitting next, right next to the printers and the punchers and the readers, and so they were the ones controlling it, um, Jazz 2, because it was all about spooling. 
remote job entry, you can start and stop lines. Um, um, SNA remote law workstation. So VTAM was already able to connect to Jazz 2. There was already an interface back in 79. Um, there's all kind of um, commands here. And uh, there is hundreds of commands for Jazz 2. And um, it's, it's important that you get familiar with Jazz 2 because it is the number one uh, subsystem that you're going to be working on um, when you manage your own mainframe. Um, and as I said, maybe I'll make a, a video um, in the future about multi-access pool JS2 so we can have two JS2 systems use the same spool so they can see each other. And it's interesting because you will be able to see uh, the other systems, uh, jobs running and executing. It's a, it's, a, it's a way of clustering two MBS systems. Uh, very interesting. Uh, the easiest way to do it, by the way, will be under uh, VM. Um, you can have two VMs, uh, one VM 370 running and then underneath two MBS 3.8s and you can start and stop them and do all kind of interesting things. Um, or we can just uh, have shared uh, DASD with the Hercules shared DASD option. Uh, by the way, in uh, for those people using Hercules with ZOS, um, Hercules um, in the last year had, has gained um, the channel to channel adapter feature so that you can now connect to um, two ZOS systems, uh, what's called a basic sysplex. Uh, if you have if you have a time source, you can connect to um, uh, ZOS systems through a channel-to-channel -channel adapter, and then you can set up a basic sysplex with a very basic um, um, just two cluster, uh, multi-access pool. Um, which I haven't done because I don't have a ZOS available, but um, I know that it works and some people have reported success in getting it to work. Uh, I think we'll stop here for today. We've seen enough. This is all about JS2 and why it's important to understand how it works. If you have questions, um, of course, post questions in the comments below this video. I will also uh, um, put a link below this video to the JS3 video I made about uh, seven, eight months ago. Uh, early June 2017. Uh, thank you again for watching. Thank you for all the thumbs up um, uh, buttons you, uh, uh, you give me. Those are always appreciated. Please consider subscribing to the Morshix channel to get notifications of future videos I'll be making. I'll have a whole bunch of them in the pipeline. Um, and thank you very much and uh, see you soon again on the Morshix Microphone channel. Goodbye.